Today I'm going to show you how to download and run the latest version of PCSX2, the best PS2 emulator on the market. To start, we're just going to click download here. This is a very recent build, by the way. As you can see, 20th of September 2021. And once it's downloaded, go ahead and hit open file. And it's going to want to extract it. And you can just choose wherever you want to extract to. I'm just going to put it on the desktop. Hit OK. You can close out of that now. Minimize that. And there we go. It's on the desktop for us. Now that we have the application on our PC, we're going to open up the file there. Open up the application. And you can change the language if you want, but I'm English speaking, so default is great. Now it wants a BIOS file. So I put the BIOS here on the desktop. I'm just going to copy that and uh, open this up and put it in the BIOS directory right here. And refresh. There it is. And now we got it up and running. Okay, now that we have the application running and the BIOS file set up, what you want to do is you want to set up your controller. Uh, I use a PS4 controller. I'm sure you could just use a keyboard to, if you want to configure it that way. I go to gamepad settings here and pad one. And what you do, you go through every one of these controller options and just click whatever button you want mapped to it. And yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. And once you're done, hit apply, hit OK, and now your controller is set up. Now we're ready to run a game. So go ahead and click on C, DVD, ISO selector, browse, and I just threw mine on the desktop, so Ape Escape 2 here, open, and then go to boot ISO over by system, and just like that. We are running a PS2 game. Once you got your PS2 game running, some settings you might want to keep in mind is the save state and the load state. Basically, you can save a point in your game and then you can just load back to it. Pretty cool. You can also improve the graphics in the game. For example, if you prefer a different aspect ratio, you can just go to general settings, uh, window, and you can change it to widescreen. And this just stretches the screen. Okay. If you like, if you want to get rid of those black bars and stuff. And double click to go full screen, by the way. Um, and this game, you can actually change the aspect ratio in game. Ape Escape 2. You can change it to 16.9. So, there. No longer stretched. Oop, I just screwed something up. No longer stretched. Widescreen natively. If your game doesn't support widescreen natively, there's also widescreen hacks right here, or widescreen patches. And it's not like perfect. You know what I'm saying? Like just like with PS1 games and uh, GameCube games, if you widescreen patch them. Uh, there could be some graphical errors. Another awesome setting to be aware of is the uh, plugin settings for graphics. So go down to graphics settings here. This is the graphics plugin. You can change the native resolution, and it's just awesome. Like, change it to 4K. Oh, you got hit OK. And now it's 4K. It's insane. I know, like, the video is 1080p, but trust me, on my screen, it's 4K my 4k tv very sharp plug-in settings you might want to be aware of uh anti-trophic filtering we can change it to 16 times and if you hover over the options a lot of times they'll give you a description of what each option does we'll do it there we go reduces texture aliasing at extreme viewing angles uh, again just hit ok to finalize it and then you can see it i think it just smooths it out a little bit i think other graphic settings you might want to change is like I turn off dithering. Uh, dithering is just dots to a high low color depth. Uh, you can play around with this. I usually just use it as bilinear forest excluding sprite because that's what it recommends for upscaled resolutions. And I always play upscaled resolutions. Some settings you might want to consider if you're having graphical issues. 
is advanced settings and hacks and to utilize that those settings enable hw hacks right here then you go into there and you can read a description for a lot of these and it'll show you a lot of times the exact game that it's having issues with and that the setting will fix and uh the one we're going to fix right now is dragon ball z budagai tenkaichi 3 and as you can see there's like a black outline that's not supposed to be there uh, and we're going to fix that by changing the oop, that's memory cards changing the off texture offset within advanced settings so 500 500 just like it was saying for persona 3 okay and just like that it's mostly fixed it's not perfect but some tweaking and it would be perfect some non-graphical settings that are pretty fun is frame limiting if you can disable frame limiting here with f4 or you could go in the menu and do it like this there's also slow motion adjust which will you know cut your game speed in half it'll be slow motion and turbo adjust and you hit tab and at twice the speed they all have their own little uh hotkeys and in game it looks like this like this is normal speed and if we hit f4 for like unlimited speed it's like like i can't even play the game it's insane and then i think shift tab should be slow motion now if you're trying to run a game here and it's just too slow and you have native resolution you haven't upped the graphics whatsoever and you're still running really bad uh, you might want to consider speed hacks they have a present system here so you can like up it okay and here's the little text that tells you what's recommended and what's not and that'll just help speed it up or make it work you know for you if you have an underpowered PC, you can also turn off present and kind of do stuff yourself. You know, up to you to try that if your PC is underpowered. Conversely, if you're having problems with some glitches and you have a overpowered PC or, you know, a PC that should be able to run PCSX2, uh, you could try disabling speed hacks, you know, so go down to one is safest, then turn off present and hit enable speed hacks apply okay and if you're still having the same graphical issue you know that the speed hacks are not you know enabling it and there you have it that's how you download and run the latest version of pcsx2 on windows 10 and the best settings or at least the settings i'm aware of uh, i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it was helpful if it was helpful let me know in the comments below if you have any questions again leave those in the comments below i'll try to get with you as soon as possible and until the next video, peace.